guys and welcome back to my channel and today's video today i'm actually going to talk about some products that i regret purchasing and from now on i do have a playlist which is called regrets it can be re products that i regret purchasing products that i regret not purchasing which i will do a video on very soon or very soon but i will do it soon and yeah just basically regret videos this is totally inspired by samantha march so i will of course leave her channel in my description box and her playlist in my description box with the regrets but first of all if you're not subscribed to my channel i would highly suggest you guys to subscribe i upload videos six to seven times a week so you do get a lot of content here but now let's get into the video all right first of all i want to say that i do have a tutorial on this look don't know if it's up but if it is i will leave it in the cards if it's not it's coming so um we're gonna talk about some products that i regret purchasing and the first thing it's a very affordable product and i definitely didn't spend a lot of money on this but this is a product from elf and it's a blush and i i don't think i have ever regret ed purchasing a blush i don't think so anyway this is the one the little fucker <laughs> no this is the shade let's see fuchsia fusion looks like this it has a similar packaging to the nars packaging and this is just a pink shade but it contains so much glitter it contains like it doesn't contain shimmer it contains glitter chunks the same thing as the wet and wild did but they kind of blend away this is just too i don't know maybe i should try to use this more because I, I haven't used this in probably one and a half year maybe i should try it but i just don't think that there's anything like that really sucks me in i have done another video that is why i have a lot of swatches here um but this just not something that really pulls me in to try this blush by the way i did have to go through my collection quite a lot so i think i'm gonna organize my collection and just declutter just a little bit some animal tested products that i don't really use and some other products that are old and so on if you would like that let me know if you would like it a video just where i organize my makeup let me know because if you want me to then i will record it if not then i will just do it off camera next up i'm gonna talk about a foundation and there's nothing wrong with the actual product itself so i'm just gonna this is the la girl pro courage hd foundation in the shade sand just i'm just gonna does it look like my shade? No. This is the foundation I use today. This is the Makeup Revolution foundation stick. Let me just hold these up. They are not even close. Why the F did I purchase this foundation when it's clearly is not my shade? I don't know. I did self tan a lot when I used this. So uh, I wanted to purchase this just so I could mix it with other foundations just to make them my shade. So I can just take a drop of this, blend it in with a foundation that was too light for me at the point or at that time. But I, 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 oh, I'm kind of kicking myself. I was so stupid. So we're going to talk about a palette next. And it's actually a palette from Juvia's Place. And the thing is that I love Juvia's Place. They definitely have some palettes that I love more and some palettes that I love less. But that's mostly because of the shades in it. But this one I just don't really have a strong connection to. I could definitely declutter this from my collection. This is the Saharan palette by Juvia's. And there's just something with this that doesn't really pulls me in when i bought it i bought it mainly for this red shade because i was just intrigued by it i thought that this was a stunning red and also the shade iman right here i mean let me just swatch this this is definitely a amazing shade for inner corner highlight or for just putting on your lid or whatever you want to use it for um i also really love the shade kia it's like a green shade but it kind of transforms um, it's almost like the, the shade in the Comfort Zone palette by, Ju uh, by Juvia's Place by uh, Wet n Wild. I don't have that, but it looks similar anyway. But the red shade pulls pink on me if I just... I mean, if I have it right here, you can see. But let me just... It kind of becomes this strawberry red shade, which I didn't want it to be. I wanted it to be an intense 
red shade and it definitely isn't and I just don't feel that I can do a lot with this. Now I am not one of those persons that has to have a palette or a standalone palette because I have a lot of palettes so I definitely don't need just one palette to stand out but there's something about this that just doesn't want me to use it. I don't know. I think I've used this once or twice or something and um that's very rare for me when it comes to Juvia's. So let me talk about a bronzer that I regret purchasing. This is the Marc Jacobs bronzer in the shade 102 Tantric. Looks like this. It comes with a giant mirror and then the product is quite large. I don't know if it's any difference between other bronzers, but you get 25 grams. And in the next one, you get 9.5 grams. So you do get a lot of product in this, which I would assume because of the price. Let me start off by saying that this is not a bad product. I love this bronzer, but I do use it not as much as I should, but I do use it once in a while. I enjoy this bronzer. I paid, I tried to check how much my currency was in dollars, and it's basically that I think I paid $58 for this, which is insane. I really wanted to purchase this, so I went to Sephora and I picked up the last one, and now I'm kind of regretting it. I'm like, why did they have this in stock? It's too much money for me to spend on a bronzer. This is definitely me feeling a lot bougie and I did remember that I wanted to reward myself because I don't know, I did something uh, that I felt was worth rewarding. But I mean, it's $58 for a fucking bronzer. This is the only thing I own from Marc Jacobs. It's, as I said, it's too much money. If I could do it all over again, I would not. I do have another high-end product here and I'm actually thinking ab about doing a, um, a video of high-end makeup which, which, <laughs> worth the splurge. So I will probably do that in the next few weeks as well. But this is a product that I did not think is worth the splurge. This is Becca's Highlights and you know that I love mine in the shade Opal. I wish that I would have purchased Moonstone or something because compared to, um, let me just swatch it right here. It is right here. The formula is amazing. But the thing about this is that it's pure white. For instance, if you have a glazed donut from Nikki Tutorials, that is not a pure white. It's more of a beige white. But this is straight up. I'm going to swatch it on this arm because I don't have any swatches right here. This is a straight up white. And even though I have very fair skin, it just looks, I'm not saying that my makeup looks natural, but it looks unnatural with this on top. As I said, I know that this doesn't look natural either, but do you know what I mean when I say that? Just It just doesn't look very good. I do have a product here from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and the thing is that I have had this hidden in my collection or in my vanity. This is the Beauty Express for brows and eyes and this is a Anastasia Bell Hills. I have mine in the shade Brunette. It looks like this. The only good thing I have to say about this is the brush that it came with. Oh my god I love that brush which you guys know because I did talk about it in my beauty products I use all the time but never talk about which I will leave a link to up here. But this is not my favorite. It You can definitely see that it looked looks used but mainly what i have used this for is the wax i have tried a couple of times don't really know how that works this shade i think is very nice this one i never use and then it looks like these two are kind of they are quite used but they get this weird film on top it almost looks like i have used a wet uh, brush in this so I had to like take my nail and scrape the weird film off to make the product work for me. And it's a lot of money for this. I think this is also around $50 that I paid, which is insane. I just don't think that this is a great brow product. I love my Wet n Wild little kit that you know that I have. So um, I definitely regret picking this one up. Let me talk about a product from Kat Von D that I regret purchasing and it's the Shade and Light Eye Palette. It's definitely a palette that I regret purchasing because how many times have I used this? Maybe twice. It's just that I don't really go for natural 
makeup i don't really go for neutrals today i went for some neutral shades i did go in with some blacks and some browns and stuff but this is just not the the palette i use i wanted to show you guys this one as well because i do have the top chocolate bar i do have the Too faced chocolate bar and this one i have used i don't regret purchasing this i have almost hit pan on this shade and it also has some nice shimmers i love this hazelnut shade but it feels like this gives me a little bit more of variety compared to this shade or this palette i just don't really use it that much i never use this one actually i really need to use it but i just don't ever feel like pulling this out of my collection but i still don't want to get rid of it because it is kat von d i don't know it just feels like if i were to get rid of this it feels like i would regret it so i just i just cannot but i do regret purchasing it but at the same time i don't want to get rid of it next up i want to talk about my cover fx custom enhancer drops and the same thing here with the Marc Jacobs bronzer if I could go back I wouldn't purchase them but at the same time I love the f the product so I would wouldn't get rid of them I do love the Marc Jacobs bronzer and I do love these custom enhancer drops or these liquid highlights but if I could go back I would not repurchase them because they are so expensive and there is cheaper alternatives on the market I know for instance that uh, a lot of people loves these ones from Makeup Revolution. I don't know, I haven't purchased them because I'm not that into cream highlights. So it feels unnecessary for me to purchase them, especially when I have these. But I mean, let me just show you this one. This is the shade, oh my God, I took too much. This is the shade Celestine. Let me just blend this out for you. I mean, do you see that intenseness? it's so intense and it's so beautiful i just love them but at the same time they are too expensive especially for someone like me that just want to play with them once in a while not for a everyday use so now we're going to talk about my last product that i regret purchasing and it's the naked 2 by urban decay believe it or not this is my only product from urban decay no no, no, no. I have, um, mm, 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 mm. I have their bronzer as well. But these are the only things that I have from Urban Decay. Urban Decay is quite expensive in Sweden. Is it? I think it's expensive in other countries as well. I don't know. But I bought this because of the hype. And um, when I got into makeup, everyone was talking about Urban Decay and the Naked palette. And I was just like, okay, um, I'm gonna buy one. I went to the store and I looked at the one, two, three, and I didn't know which one I wanted to purchase. And I finally, I, I picked this one up. I have used this maybe two or three times. I just, I don't love this. I don't like it at all. I definitely struggle every time I want to use this. I struggle coming up with a look I want to use. I don't really like anything about this. And also the packaging is super cheap. I don't love this metal -y thing. I actually pulled out this palette from IDC Color. This is my maybe like five pounds or eight dollars, something like that. And this has the same kind of packaging, you know, the metal -y packaging, which I think is fine for a product that is this cheap. But when you pay, how much did I pay for this? I do have to check. I paid $64 for this one. So, I mean, for me to get this weird cheap packaging, it's just, it's just super duper weird. But that was all of the products that I had to talk about today. Please let me know which products you regret purchasing. I would love to know. But as I said, that was all from now. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!